we find ourselves in the great Amazonian jungle. It is full of life, space is highly limited. Do you have to move the leaves and branches and stuff out of the way? Like, I even have tree drawings. <laughs> this is the great Amazonian canopy. The foliage is so dense, light can barely even reach the ground. There are only a few light spots in which many organisms compete for this valuable sunlight. As you can see, my room is a total mess. And this is an excellent opportunity to discuss a text that I just read of Mary Douglas. In, uh, what was her name? What was her name? Purity and purity and danger. An analysis of the concept of pollution and taboo. In the text, Mary Douglas uses the word dirt not to refer to the literal kind of dirt, you know, the brown stuff that we see in the ground, but more in the symbolic sense. Our ideas of dirt is influenced by our knowledge of germs. Dirt is never an isolated, unique event. Where there is dirt, there is a system. Dirt is a byproduct of systematic ordering and classifying matter. In so far that ordering involves the rejection of inappropriate elements. The optics aren't dirty themselves, they're just out of place. <clears throat> oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, oh, fuck, okay. Uh. Socks without a matching pair can be considered an aberration. You don't want to be seen wearing two different colored socks, it's just weird, man. A solution to deal with these outcasts is to isolate them, keep them outside, keep them in a box. Dirt avoidance to us is a matter of hygiene or aesthetics. Supposedly, it's not influenced by religion anymore. Despite the fact the circumcision is no longer necessary for hygiene, it is still performed because of the aesthetic. This is my reenactment of the circumcision with a potato and a plastic bag. I have no idea how circumcision can still be practiced. It seems so painful. I don't understand it. Why? Reflection and dirt involves reflection on order to disorder. Form to formlessness. Oh! Being and non-being. We enjoy works of art because it enables us to see the structures behind our normal experience. Ambiguity isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can be great for arts. Aesthetic pleasure arises from the perceiving of inarticulate forms. How am I supposed to clean up my room if my mind is not clean? I'm not, I'm not very good at cleaning. <laughs> I hate cleaning. I don't see the point. But this can be attributed to an in-between zone. For without mess, we have no creation. There cannot be new patterns. You know, order relies, order, order can be stifling. Order can limit. It's been three days of me doing a half-hearted attempt at cleaning my room with varying degrees of success, uh, probably uh, leaning more towards the non-successful. Everything goes down. It's almost like my nature is to be disorganized. That's my structure. I'm like the opposite. I'm an anti-structure structuralist. I look for non-structure to find structure in my life. Anyways. Society creates systems in order to impose order, and it has to be easy enough for people to follow along. Uh, that's why this dichotomies, this binaries, have to be exaggerated between uh, what's good and bad, what's up and down, what's male and female, what's you know what's cool and what's not cool. Um, binaries have to be exaggerated to unrealistic levels in order to make things run more silky smooth. Is it okay to just say that it's in some people's nature to be messier? We need messy people! We need messy people to bring disorder, to bring possibility. 
So in conclusion, don't clean your room. Don't bother. It's a sign that you're a healthy human being. You don't have to clean anything. It also means that you have a sense of individuality. You have a sense of self. Or, or that you're just lazy. <laughs> don't waste your time. Live your life. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. It's just... Life is stupid. It's meaningless. Don't, don't, don't fucking bother. Like, like, what the fuck? Like, no. What are you waiting for? There's a whole world to explore outside. Just look how beautiful. No, uh, just kidding. I'm, I am gonna try to organize uh, like the socks. I'm gonna put the same kinds of socks together. It has to be like a wave. It has to be like a, a cycle. A cycle of um, defilement and pur purification. It has to be an ongoing thing, not just like stale, not like constantly dirty, not like constantly clean. Just, you know, like a fun little, like a fun little balance. Don't, don't actually be yourself, or at least not 100% yourself. Just be like yourself enough that you can get along with other people peacefully, which is why I will go back to organizing my apartment. I have a plane to Mexico tomorrow, so I have to get things ready. Uh, the new final message. Um, it's okay to be cyclically dirty once in a while. It makes you a more interesting person. You know, it's good for your soul. Okay. Yeah, I think Mary Douglas, she's an awesome person. I like her analysis and her new approach on comparative religion. I think we talk too much about fear and honestly, fear gets a bit tiring, honestly. Like, analyzing things through the idea of like hygiene, in a way it humanizes, it helps to humanize other religions. Other religions, other ways, different ways of life, different from our own that can seem particularly alien. And if we use fear as a way of analyzing it, it's only gonna like alienate us more from them rather than finding similarities and bonds. And, and I don't know, it just makes things more magical.